Hey everybody, what's good? What's good? Um, I just wanted to come on here real quick and get some things off my chest real quick. Um, you know, I ain't even gonna lie, like today, I really in my feelings right now and you know it's just really trying to stay positive and stay um active and and push through the hurt through the pain you know they say that time heals all wounds But they don't. You know, you just find ways of dealing with things and trying to, you know, move forward. But, you know, I'm really trying to be strong over here. But it's, it's not easy. Um, But I will say, when I was um, going through the notions of grief and everything, um, I learned a lot out of those seven years. And I'm grateful for the journey that I had to embark you know, to adjust and really realize that life hits everybody. You know, you go have your curb rolls, you go have your strikeouts, but you're still going to win the World Series sometimes. And, and that's how I'm here today because I didn't just give up on myself <clears throat> you know I just really hope that everyone will appreciate my honesty that I gave you know, during every episode and it's just being courageous and being, um, you know, truthful on the mission and what and why I do what I do. And one of the reasons why I work so hard and I, pu I push myself so much is the fact that I wasn't able to save my brother from his um, shortcomings. And, um, you know, you just never know like what a person's going through. You know, you never know what's going on and behind closed doors and And being young, you know, I didn't have empathy like that. You know, I really didn't understand it until I had to walk in his shoes. When I was diagnosed with PTSD. And I really experienced what he felt throughout the years. And it just gave me the indication of just having... um grace and mercy towards certain people. You know, certain people are just wicked and cruel because it happened to them. Somebody was wicked and cruel to them and they became what they became. And I'm just grateful that I had them for 40 years, you know, despite 
him being gone, I'm grateful for what he taught me, how much he impacted my life, and how much of a father figure that he was to me when we didn't have our dad. And it just sucks when someone that you love pass away and they gone, but you still have to live, you know, you still have to try to make your life as um, great, not just great, but phenomenal, while they no longer here to enjoy it and witness the fruits of your labor. And it just, you know, sucks sometimes because I felt like he missed out on the greatest years of my life, you know, getting my first apartment, <laughs> getting my first promotion and getting this show, getting all of this. And then when I have kids, you know, he would never get to meet my kids when I have kids, you know. And that's like the only thing that like hurts a whole lot. But I know that God knows what he's doing. He don't never make any mistakes, but despite um, him being gone, you know, you just never thought or you just never know who you gonna need until they're no longer here and <sighs> life has its surprises you know like It hurts, it bothers me when, you know, people who still over the age of 30 can still have a brother and I don't anymore. You know, I used to just sit back and just be like, you know, this is not fair. You know, I'm not a bad person, but I just felt that um, I was being punished for something. And it's just, you know, certain things that you just have to live with for the rest of your life, you know, and If only time machines existed, right? <clears throat> I would have built a time machine a long time ago that, in order to change things, and I couldn't. I can't. I can't take back what happened. You know, I can only fix today and the future, you know? But the past has really have molded me to being very um, disciplined and and to use my time wisely. Don't waste my time. Don't take it for granted. And I hope that people will see why I had to become who, who I became. And it just hurts so much. Nothing really gets to me except this. Nothing makes me more vulnerable than this. And you know, I can show that I'm human through this. And I'm pushing because I got people that still need me. I got people that still depend on me. 
I got people that still look at me as strong. Invincible. <laughs> but it, the truth of the matter is, I break down, I hurt, but I do it in silence. But today I felt that it was appropriate for me to give a solid tribute to my big brother. And then when you're the little brother, you know what I'm saying, you just want to be like your brother, you know. You think everything he does is cool and you begin to emulate him a lot. You want to dress like him. You want to listen to the same music. He's basically your first best friend. You know, he had a lot of pain. He had a lot of anguish from um, what he experienced with our dad, with our father. And he couldn't express his emotions and his feelings and And um, and, and I chose not to end up like that. And I chose to become different, to become um, transparent. Because holding all that anger in does nothing, but makes you suffer in the end. It breaks you down in the end. It destroys you in the end. But I just remember him how I remember him. And I remember him, you know, being silly and being funny, being caring, being also a conniving snake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was just very cruel sometimes and a jerk, an asshole. But he still was my brother. And I hold a lot of things dearly to me. You know, I hold the times um, when we was able to spend time together. We was able to play video games together when we was able to um, wrestle each other. He was strong as an ox, you know what I'm saying? And always gave me advice. You know, a lot of times I still need his advice. A lot of times I need his guidance, his wisdom. But I have to, you know, try to figure it out for myself and grow. Try to navigate and maneuver do life pitfalls, you know what I'm saying? But I just try to just make sure that I just do what he wanted me to do. And I just want for everybody to get this message. Like, it's not never too late to make amends. to make things right between somebody that you haven't spoken to in years. It's never too late to bury the hatchet, especially when you have siblings and you have family. Because that bond is sacred, despite the relationship that you have. You know, it's just something internally. It's something that's in your soul. It's, you get a phone call saying that they died or passed away. You're going to feel it. Your, your, your mouth going to say, I don't care or whatever, but your body is going to react differently than your brain. It's going to hit your heart, and it's going to be the most excruciating pain that you ever experienced. And you go feel like you're having a heart attack because it hurts that bad.
to the point that you can't even breathe, to the point that you can't even walk, you can't stand. And you'll need to be held up. You're going to be so broken inside and damaged to the point that you just can't fathom how and why. And what this feeling is about. And like I said, it, that'll be something I would never forget. And it'll be something that I would never act like it never happened. Because it did. And But he was just one of those unforgettable missions that I will never forget in my life and and while I chased this dream he will always be mentioned he will always be the the vocal point of why I do this show and do this platform and and that's why it's going to go further and beyond because of the fact that he gave me that motivation. Because I, I can't sit back and allow for his memory to be vanquished. His personality to, to be a waste when it wasn't a waste to me. It's just really hard when you look like somebody that's dead, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you just you just go through like a whole lot of um thoughts and your thoughts just be running a hundred thousand miles per hour and just try to just My will to, to fight and my will to survive by any means necessary and living without people that meant the most to me. That that's what got the, <clears throat> got me through these years was to pull it all out and And try to help other people. And it's okay to to feel, you know, it's okay to to cry, it's okay to to whip, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. Um able to escape the dark place and escape 
not having something to live for because I have a lot of things to live for now. And I'm powerful. I'm a strong human being. I'm a strong man. You know, I'm still one step ahead because I'm here talking to you guys because now um, every day I, I'm pushing to do things positive with my life and and not hit rock bottom or self-destruct. So I'm holding it down for him and, and I hope he pleased. I hope he happy what I created and by the impact and the mission that, that I have embarked these past couple years almost and I just happy um I'm happy that he comes to my dreams when I miss him. Cause that's not going away. No time soon and I'm happy that um that I'm getting better and better every year. But I just wanted to tell my oldest brother, Damien Lawan Alfred, happy birthday. And I miss you, I love you. And I hope that you're free from all this mess. And I think if you would have saw how your death would have impacted mom, you would have took a different route. You didn't have to see what I have to see. You didn't have to deal with what I had to deal with. Ugh. But, um, you will always be my first best friend. And I will never forget you. And I love you so much. And you guys have a good day. Peace.